Now, let's meet Joe Trenari. He is a candidate for assessor in Berkeley County. Joe, good morning. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, guys. Pleasure to have me on here. Well, you know what, Joe? We haven't met you yet, so this will be our first chance to get to know you a little bit. Absolutely. This is the first time for many people here in Berkeley County that haven't had the pleasure to be able to meet me. Now, your dad works in the assessor's office already. Yes. Yes, he does. He is the uh, the chief deputy in there. Chief deputy. Okay. And and tell us the Joe Trenari story. Joe, uh, how old are you? Where, where do you come from? What, what led you to this point in life? So I, I'm 22 years old, and um, I've lived my entire life here in Berkeley County uh, off of Specs Run Road right as soon as you get into uh, West Virginia from Virginia. Um, I've, ever since I was a kid, man, I've always had a, a dream to be necessarily in politics, obviously a little higher than this, you know, president of the United States and stuff like that, you know, whenever well, you there is. Wait till you're 35 to run for that. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but, you know, for career day and everything like that, you know, I would always dress up, and, you know, in suit and tie and everything and go around with like my little American flag pin and stuff. But uh, this this to me is a stepping stone into that direction to be able to right the wrongs and try to help the community the best way I, I know how. You meant, right you right, right the wrongs. Yeah. That's that's kind of a catch word that's, uh, that I kind of cringe every time I hear. You want to explain that? So uh, it is it, as as far as the assessor's office goes. Or? Oh no no no! You just said in your political uh, as a kid you want to get into politics to right the wrong. Well, to 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 right the wrongs. So um, for for me, it's it's taxes and how everything has been you know necessarily run. Everything is way too political, way too wishy washy, back and forth. It it needs to be straightforward and to the point and, you know, transparency with the people. They 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 should be able to know where their money goes and how it's being spent. You want to be the assessor. What is the job of the assessor in Berkeley County? So the job of the assessor in Berkeley County, we um the the office in there and me myself included hopefully you know come may or uh come january 1 of next year is to assess property values whether it be real estate commercial or personal property and how do you do that uh follow state laws and regulations you know that it's it, it's pretty much state regulated um so as long as we follow the laws of the state you know we we, we should be pretty good we have to be within um 110 and 90 percent of the actual or the state's value if i'm not mistaken and and how do you assess property to get to the appropriate value um that's that that that's with uh field appraisers so they they go out and they have a um uh, a list of things that they have to check on as far as you know square footage stuff like that of uh, the type of or the uh, the class the tax class that it's in whether it's owner occupied or um you know for rent stuff like that which all affects what the tax value is so the the folks in the field do that and then what is your job as the assessor once that information comes in uh manage the ball or manage the budget and you know the office as a collective so there is if I'm not mistaken, 31 employees that work for the assessor's office. And, um, you know, they would all be a branch under me. You know, there's, there is other departments like our commercial department and our residential department, which kind of, you know, branches off and helps me, you know, would help me delegate the work necessarily. But it, it's, it's mostly managing the office and trying to make sure that everything gets done in a timely fashion and we meet every, every single state regulation and uh, deadline. You say there's 31 employees roughly in the assessor's department? If I'm not mistaken, yes. What is the budget that you'd be managing in the assessor's office? Uh, so there is, there is a state budget that we get back, which is, should be 2% of the um, the tax revenue that Berkeley County brings in, and there is a county commission budget that we also work out of that they kind of give us. So there's there's two um, pools of money for us to be able to pull out of and make everything accessible for us to try to get to where we need to be. Do you have any idea what that total amount is? I'm um, I'm not in there. I can't tell you that amount. That's under lock and key by my opponent. 
He doesn't make it public. Larry House doesn't make it public what the budget is. Not that I'm not that I'm aware of. Bill, how does that work as the when you were commission president in regards to the assessor's office and its budget? All of it's public information. Okay, it's all public yeah, information. It is yes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we don't know what the budget is roughly though. No. So I I, I would have absolutely no idea what, what what that number figure is. All right. Uh, have you had management experience managing a budget and a large group of people before? Uh, not and not necessarily a large group of people, but um, I I've been working in plumbing most of, most of my life ever since I was ten years old. I you know I went out on job sites with my dad, handing him tools and stuff like that. And when I turned eighteen and got out of high school, I started to be to manage his um, plumbing business and run it the best way that I know how. You know, focus on customer service, being upfront with people. You know, trying not to be wishy washy like I said before, and you know, straightforward with the people. You know, I, I'm gonna make sure that I tell everybody who I've done work for the best advice that I can give. And I would not recommend something if I wouldn't put it in my own house. Bill? Uh, your treasure, who is your treasure? My treasurer is Mr. Doug Copenhaver. And what is your, how long have you known Doug and uh, what prompted Doug to jump on your bandwagon? So um, for, for me, I went to Doug for advice when I, when I started to, started my, my campaign and to run. I went to him for advice and, you know, try to see what knowledge he had because he is a for me or former county council uh, or leader or whatever, you know, that necessarily that, that t president, mm -hmm. pre president of the county council. And I went to him and I told him my story and what I wanted to do. And, you know, he jumped in with both feet. He said, if you don't have a treasure, you do now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was more than happy, you know, to bring someone on with that much experience and that much, um, um yeah just ju just experience you know being able to run the county the the way that he has for the 12 or 12 years that he was in there 12 18 years something like that um he's been a tremendous help to me in getting two people and knowing how to talk to them and get my point across and outreach he's the reason that i'm on here today Okay. Well, you have a fairly large audience today uh, listening to you, and a question that we ask frequently to a challenger, why are you trying to kick Larry Hess out of office? So that that's that's uh, that's a little bit of a double edged sword. Well, let's speak to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I it, I believe that the office that they have in there has all of the puzzle pieces to be a you know a well-oiled functioning and efficient machine and the pieces just aren't in the right places and I, I feel like it's it's mismanaged in a way or you know not even managed at all i hear and this is say uh this is hearsay so i'm i i will not vouch to it that larry uh larry has the incumbent uh keeps fairly uh uh short hours if that if that if that is also my knowledge too um you know it's hard to get something done if you're not there until lunchtime every day and then whenever your lunchtime is over and you leave at two o'clock it's it's really hard to manage an office of 31 people and keep them motivated for um keep them motivated and on the right track to be able to get the job done no. If 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 your if your boss does not you know show up, what makes you want to put in the effort to, you know, do all the work for him? Joe, I want to make sure I understand this correctly. You know, we're talking with Joe Trenary, candidate for assessor. You're saying that the current assessor has a two-hour workday, by and large, noon to two is what you're saying. Most days, yes, sir. And how do you know this? I I know this from other people in county, different county offices. I know this from you know people that have just worked with him or worked with him or tried to go into his office to speak to him and some of them have you know necessarily startled him whenever he they opened the door he might have been asleep at the desk i'm i'm not sure this is all hearsay to me because i'm you know i'm not there i'm not the one that's experienced this now but, I've, but, I've, your, but your dad is in the office though he is in the office is he, is he also telling you this he he is he's not none of my information is coming from him I, I, I will tell you that he will not speak 
anything negative about his boss because that is his morals and that's that's the way that I was raised and that's the way that you know the Trinary family rolls I guess because this is a this is a, f- a fairly serious allegation someone's working two hours a day I assume this is a full-time job Bill is it a full-time it is full-time job it's what? paid for full-time 40 the, hours a week yeah except for the county commissioners uh, all the jobs are expected to be full-time and are paid at full-time all right so you're basically saying he's working about 10 hours a week instead of the full 40. And that's that's where taxpayers' dollars are going. That's an interesting accusation. And so, can your father work for you if you get elected? I I don't necessarily think that he is. He, well, the role that he has now, he would more than likely not be able to keep. And that's that's up. That's not up to me. You know, I, obviously, I love my father, and you know, he raised me to be the man that I am today. So, for for me, I would love to keep him. But, you know, it's it's not up to me. It's up to the ethics board. And, you know, if once I, you know, I, I win this uh, this election, um, we're going to have to go to the ethics board and, you know, make a a, a plea or a uh, however they go necessarily go about it to try and remedy that issue and figure out what we can do. And I'm I'm sure, you know, with my dad's worth at work ethic and um the type of person that he is that he will have absolutely no problem finding a another job in a county office you know to try to maintain his years of service there um let, joe let me jump in if i okay. can the way the rules read maria is you can have family members in the same office okay what you cannot have a family member reporting to someone directly in a supervisor capacity so it's it's possible if uh if joe's father could be reassigned to something in the bowels of the organization Mm -hmm. but could not be a line office reporting to the director and that that would be the best case scenario for me because you know i know my father he's been in there for 14 years and knows a lot of information that you know all the information that i've been able to bring to you today whether it be you know him talking talking about the way the or, or all the things with the office and um you know coming from doug on how the uh, the office is you know that's really the only way you can necessarily get that information and try to figure out what the assessor does and how to go about it and you know the type of people that work in there our guest is joe trinary candidate uh, candidate for assessor uh, larry hess is the incumbent he'll larry will be on the program too in the coming days uh, as well in regards to his reelection bid. What does the position pay, Joe? Any idea? Uh, if if I'm not mistaken, on the sheet that I got from or when I filed my candidacy, it was like fifty six thousand dollars somewhere in the in that range. So uh, it's it, it's not anything substantial, and I'm not the I'm not the type of person that's going to go there and cash in a paycheck. I I still run Doc's Plumbing as of today, and um, I would love to continue to be able to do that after my work hours. But when I'm in the assessor's office, I can promise you one thing. I will be the first person to open that door, and I will be the last one to close it. No disrespect to you, Joe, but why isn't your father running for this position? He's not running for this position due to health issues. So he, he had had a, uh, a heart attack in October of last year and had to have triple bypass surgery, open, you know, open heart. It was, it was a really rough time for me and my family. And it's, um, you know, uh, several people had heard from Larry that if you worked in the office and you ran against him, that he would fire you. So there was also that kind of worry from you know my father and our family you know he's he, he he's supported my he's helped support my mother now granted my mother works at the uh, the VA center and in, uh, in the in their finance so uh, it's it, it it would have been difficult for us to pull off if you know he necess- or for my family to be able to survive if he lost his job because he ran Joe I want to ask you about assessments in Berkeley County because property values are increasing and they the are in- increasing uh, when you look at the resale prices of houses, faster than most people probably are used to. Uh, now, there's a limit as to how much you can increase taxes on a house as they go up. The state has those limits. But nevertheless, it appears that the times when assessment price uh, values were flat is, is over. That's a thing of the past. 
uh, in regards to how your job plays out with the public, you may not be a very popular person when people find out that their assessed values have gone up. And that, uh, that to me is 100% okay. I, I know what it's like to be, or, you know, being a service plumber, go out to somebody's houses and them not be happy with absolutely nothing you did, whether you did it the right way or not. And that's why transparency is a huge part of my my platform is I want to make sure that the people know what I'm doing and how I'm able to do it. So how we got to their number and how we got to what their their taxes are so that there's there's no there's no in between. There's no gray area. It is black and white. It is right there for everyone to see. And it's kind of hard to argue it when everybody is treated the same and will be treated the same. Every, every, everybody's going to be treated fairly. Annually, Rob, in the spring, uh, if you feel that you're being improperly taxed, the rate, you can petition to the county commission. And the county commission, the assessor's office, has to justify their numbers, and mm-hmm. you as a taxpayer can counter that. So there is a formal yes. process. Equalization, is that what they call it? Equalization, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew there was a, it's the Board of Equalization and Review, correct? Yeah, exactly Bill, right, yes. That you can, yep. um, you can uh, challenge what the assessor has, um, has done. So, Maria, do you have a final question for Joe or Bill? No. <laughs> I'm not running. I do not. <laughs> no, I don't mean your question for Bill. Yeah, Bill, do you have a question for Joe? Although, if you'd like to question Bill, go right ahead. <laughs> Yeah. If not, we'll give about what you think about. I, we'll give Joe the mic and let him uh, talk to the audience one last time. No, it's not know. a question. It's a it's a statement. Uh, I I think uh, Joe deserves credit for coming in today and being fairly frank and responding to some of our questions. Our questions were not taken out of the air. The questions are based upon what I have heard and others have heard uh, from the, the rumor mill around the, the courthouse. So I, so, uh, so we nah, were... Nah, there's not one of those around the courthouse. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but so I, I was putting you on the spot intentionally, Joe, to see how you responded. And I think you faced up to the, to the question, and I thought your answer was, was quite appropriate. Well, one, one, one of my favorite songs has a, has a line in it, and it says that line is hard and the truth comes out anyways. Yeah. So I might as well be up front with you and tell you exactly what my truth is and everything that I have necessarily heard. Uh, it, Joe, are you a homeowner? I, I am not a homeowner. All right, no, I, 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 I live in an apartment in, uh, in, in the garage in my, in my father's house. I didn't own a home when I was 22 either. Don't worry about it. Man. <laughs> uh, now, uh, final word is yours. Take a minute to talk to our audience. Tell them why they should vote for you as assessor. So uh, for, first off, I'd like to thank you guys for having me on today. You know, this, th- this has been a uh, kind of an other world experience for me, you know, being able to come in here and talk to you guys, you know, in 22 years, I'd never thought that I would be in the position that I am now. And I'm, I'm fairly confident in the position that uh, I've been able to arise in the people that I've met that, you know, we, we can get something done and we can make the, um, the taxpayer heard. You know, too 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 many times there is there are stories of people that are that go out and they feel like that they have to come into the office. Well, there's limited parking and all, and you know it's just a hassle. There's so many long lines, and you know one of the bases of my platform is technology. Trying to incorporate it, get a better website. Try to incorporate with the IT department that is um, in the county already that's already getting paid for this job. That just you know isn't allowed to do it, you know, per my, uh, my opponent. And I just try to be transparent with the County and try to try to make things as best I can. I, I know that, you know, with our Homestead Act and everything that, um, everything with that, that in the last five years, our Homestead has essentially been taken away there. It's the, with the tax increases, the 20,000 that is off the assessed value has essentially been taken away. And granted, I do not have direct say with that, but I vow to work with every Senator house delegate, whatever it takes to try to help the elderly here in Berkeley County. Too many stories of going to people's houses. Hey, I'm, I'm 74 years old. Um, I'm retired now. My husband passed away a year ago, and now I have to decide between my electric bill and paying my taxes. 
that's you know that's that's not right that's that's not fair we need to be able to help our elderly and the people who have really built this community from the ground up and to make it to what it is today for you know people my age and it's about time for folks my age to start giving back and trying to make a difference and that's what i'm here doing joe how can people find out more about your campaign for assessor uh, if, if you want to find out more about my campaign, you are more than welcome to go to my website, trinaryforassessor.com. And if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to my email, uh, trinaryforassessor at gmail.com. Um, and I will get back with you with any, any answer that I may have for you for any question that you have for me. Please reach out. I'm all about, you know, all audience and in, in, in interacting with the public. And we also have a, a Facebook page, which might be more accessible to other people, which it is also Trinary for Assessor. Joe, thanks for coming in today. Thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bill and Maria. Best of luck to you come election day. All righty. And again, early voting begins May 1. Yesterday was the deadline to register to vote uh, in this upcoming primary. Election day is May 14.